Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. As I told you yesterday, I read a book this weekend, only one, slowing down, but I'm still compelled to read, so I think that's cool. Like I do have, have always enjoyed reading, but lately I've been feeling compelled to read, and I like that. Uh, today we're going to talk about a book called I'll Bring You the Birds from Out of the Sky by Brian Hodge. First time I've read anything from Brian Hodge, and this book is a little slice of Appalachia mixed with some cosmic horror, and that's why I was interested in it. Um, that's kind of what I'm working on, little little Appalachia story, little horror story. Um, I, right off the bat, I it's a, it's a solid little read, like a 150 pages, like took me maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Um, the, uh, I like Brian's writing. I think it's um, pretty clean, pretty easy. He does use some uh, uh, unfamiliar, I guess, um, phrasing. But other than that, like I felt it was fine. Like it was great. Uh, it's a book about art, which is not something I read a lot about. So that was cool. Uh, it was good to see. Um, the one, the main character, I guess, I assume he's the main character. I don't, it's kind of up to you, I guess. But uh, he is, he has a gallery. He like is a curator at an art gallery. And so getting to see art through his vision of what art is or should or could be, uh, I like that. I thought that was a fun experience. Um, the book is a little bit cryptic. It's one of those books where uh, you there's a whole bunch kind of just not said. And then in between, I, I guess, sort of chapters. I, there's no chapters in the book. It's just one big text. It's kind of like a long form short story. But between sections, he peppered in like interviews with people who knew the artist of, that is kind of the subject of the story. And uh, so at, it's one of those, like, as you're reading, these uh, these little inserts are kind of filling you in on some of the story. And I enjoy that sort of thing. Um, I know, uh, for instance, Brandon Sanderson likes to do that in some of his books. He likes to have, like, a little paragraph at the start of each chapter that fills you in on some of what's been going on that he hasn't explained. And so it builds on those questions throughout the story, right? And this kind of does that. Uh, I will say, I think I gave this a four. I, I believe I still feel like it's a four out of five. I don't, it's not a great book, but I feel like uh, the, the, the kind of the reveal at the end was, The, the promise that was set in place at the beginning of the book is not really realized by the end of the book. Uh, and so I for that, I kind of took it down a little bit. It was just kind of like, okay. Um, so getting into spoiler territory, if you want to avoid that, uh, I would say I liked it and it's worth reading. And it was like $2, so go for it. Uh, but in spoiler territory world, in the beginning of the story... Um, this art director is, or this curator, is brought a painting from a girl from West Virginia. He's in Roanoke, I think Roanoke. Uh, she's in, or Richmond, whatever. Uh, she's in, from somewhere south, southern West Virginia. She brings him a painting, and immediately he's like, oh my god, I have to, is there more? And she's like, there's a whole lot more. Like, there's just a whole lot more. Uh, and... So when I was talking about the promise, at the beginning of this, it set out, like, this artist sees this one piece of art and is like, oh my god, this is, this, you know, this is something I've never seen before, this is, you know, like, a, this is a potentially a whole new type of art, like, you're, you're whoa, this is phenomenal, right? Uh, and then by the end, it's just like, so it's mushrooms? Like, um, it's not really, like, 
the the idea that the that the curator sells at the beginning of the book is that like this art is so profound of itself that you will like that by the end of the story you're going to be just like oh my god I don't know how that man painted that but by the end of the story you're like so this guy painted some mushrooms in a forest like because that's basically what it comes down to right um so they go back to West Virginia. There's a you know a whole bunch of paintings in a room, and and they all kind of depict this uh, surrealism landscape of oranges. There's oranges and through everything, not necessarily oranges the fruit, but oranges the color. Orange permeates all of the things, and he's entranced by it. And so he finds a triptych, and the triptych is not complete. They're missing one piece, and it seems to tell the tor the story that the that you're being filled in on by this man, Cecil, the artist, who has gone over the mountain and has entered into a companionship with somebody on the other side of the mountain. And the people on this side of the mountain, of course, are like, fuck those people. Those people are shit. We don't associate with those people. But Cecil ignores them and goes over the other side of the mountain anyway. And so through that story, uh, through the backstory of all of that, plus the paintings, uh, the curator decides to go over the mountain. And so they go over the mountain, and the village is basically has been abandoned for a long time and it's uh there's a whole bunch of dead animals uh the the i'll bring you the birds from out of the sky i believe is like a poem that's mentioned in the book and i don't know if that's a real poem it might be but there's you know just birds that seem like they have settled like they sat down and then just never left and just turned into skeletons standing skeleton kind of things a bunch of that weirdness um and then they find this fungal growth and uh, it's kind of overwhelming, and it is the same orange that's in these paintings. And that's really the only payoff you get for the art, is that this orange that has permeated all of these paintings is the orange of this mushroom. Uh, and it's not really like, you know, it, it's cosmic horror in that sense of there's, there's some reason uh, to be terrified of this, and it's unworldly, unknown, um, but the, when Lovecraft would explain the artwork of cosmic horror, it was always like this broke your brain to look at. Uh, in this book, it felt like it was just the guy painted trees with an orange glow around them. And you're like, that's not really that big, right? It's not like, it's not mind opening. So anyway, they spend some time in this little village. One of the guys that goes with them falls into an empty grave breathes in some of these spores and then we get to figure out what happened to cecil right basically he he did the same thing or something similar and ended up turning into something else and uh by the end of the book that something else is not really explained you just know that the boy who breathed in the spores kind of turns into a creature uh, uh he grows giant sized um and and turns into something other than human um sasquatch maybe i don't know but uh it talks the book does talk about there being other sites like this spread around the country so it's possible that it's attempting to tell the sasquatch myth through some sort of um fungal growth uh which is fine um and then the two then the the curator also transforms like he well he goes there first to transform and um, I'm, I'm not really sure. By the end of the book, you, one of them is now brings bodies to this place, and the other one buries them in this graveyard, like that basically feeds the fungus. And so, but you're not. I'm not sure which one is which in that instance. Um, you you do get the sense that through this growth, uh, the curator gets to kind of experience the universe as a whole. You know, maybe psychedelics. Who knows. Uh, but it all comes down to the zombie ants, right? The ants that have the mushroom growing out of their head that controls them. That's what it is. It's basically that for humans. Um, and so it, the payoff was fine. Like it was a, it was just fine. Um, but the, the setup in the beginning of this, you know, I was expecting like a more Lovecraft style cosmic horror painting, you know, like I was expecting simultaneously more and less from the artwork, right? The artwork was the impetus to get the curator to go there and to figure out that something happened over this mountain. But it, it wasn't, it was portrayed in the beginning as if it was going to be some profound artwork. And really it was just like, it's just 
you'd, you'd never really get that payoff for the art. It's more like just general Cosmic Horror, uh, which I enjoy. And so I enjoyed the book, and I think I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, definitely worth reading if you're into that sort of thing. Nothing complex here. Um, very simple story, but uh, paced very well. It, it plots out pretty quickly. And uh, I liked the little interviews with the older people. Uh, because the girl, by the way, the girl who brings the painting in is the great-granddaughter of this man who painted all these paintings. Uh, and we find out that basically he was fighting the transformation and, and agonizing against it, whereas the curator wanted to give in to it because he felt like it was the inevitability of it was, was there. Um, there you go. I'll bring you the birds out of the sky. Cool book. I, it's, uh, I, I don't follow a lot of authors, but I followed him on Amazon because I do want to see, I definitely want to read more of his work. Uh, I liked, I liked his storytelling style. That was I'll Bring You Birds From Out of the Sky by Brian Hodge. Link in the description. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should sound smart is tryst. It is a noun, meaning an appointment made by lovers to meet at a certain place and time. Since their families are of equal station, no one worries much about the supposedly secret trysts between Josephine and Brock. Tryst, T-R-Y-S-T. Do people still say that? Like, I know that's that feels like a very old school word. Like, it was talked about in crime dramas of the 40s. <laughs>